Thank you for joining me for this fascia fix neck video today. I am going to show you a quick program that you can do every day to help to ease achy, stiff, limited range of motion necks. So a lot of us have issues with our neck um, due to just modern everyday life. So using the, the, the cell phones in the hand, driving, um, gravity pulling us forward. So we're always battling forward flexion in our neck. Plus we have very strong patterns of movement as we age in life where it can cause uh, tightness on one side, stiffness, maybe some neck headaches, things like that. So this is a quick little program. I'm gonna describe to you how many reps to do and it's something that you would execute every day and just give it a try to see if you do that, commit to it for a week or two, if you find that there's some benefit um, for you in decreasing achiness in your neck. So first what I want you to do is find a comfortable chair to sit in. Ideally, your feet would be um, touching the floor. Mine are not, which is typically usual for me, but feet flat on the floor and then you want um, a lengthened spine. You can come up off the back of the chair, but if you prefer, you can sit back as well. You're just trying to keep yourself square to the front. So first, when we're stretching the fascia in our neck, uh, I've spoken in a previous video about the neck being an area that we have to be careful with, so we don't want to ever overstretch it. So when your fascia is stretching, you don't overstretch because you're working from a shortened muscle and a limited range of motion. But if you have any pain or discomfort in anything that you're doing, please stop, don't continue. You can message me and ask me about it. Um, but you don't want to work through pain. If it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I feel this, I feel that, but it's new, uh, most often that could be okay. So when we stretch fascia, it's connective tissue in our body and it runs throughout our entire body and gives us shape. The thing with it is that we've been avoiding it for many, many years. And the science is now really showing us that stretching the fascia is actually much more effective for our body in keeping our flexibility, range of motion, and preventing injuries than stretching the muscles themselves. So connect, connective tissue and fascia can be a layer on top of muscles, but really it goes everywhere throughout the muscle in each muscle fiber. And it gathers into bands like our ITB band and also into tendon that attaches to the bone. So uh, fascia is very important in our body. And when you address it from a, a light resistance with stretching standpoint, you're gonna benefit greatly from doing that. So here we go. I would suggest doing five reps of each of these once a day for two weeks. So that's the plan. So to start, when we stretch our neck, oftentimes we yank it to one side, which we want to avoid doing because that is overstretching. So when we're stretching fascia, we shorten the area that we're stretching, we add resistance and activation, and we move it in the opposite direction. So we're gonna start first with the back of our neck. So the muscles in the back of our neck. Most people have over lengthened muscles that allow for the head to sit forward. And when you release the fascia here, what happens is it's easier to get here. So how do we do it? We shorten it first. So when I say chin tuck, I want you to bring the chin towards your throat. Not down, not up, but straight back. And from here, we're gonna tilt it up, our chin, so that we're shortening the air in the back of our neck. Next, we'll bring your hands back behind our head. Double check that you still maintain that chin tuck and keep your tummy tight, but bring your rib cage in. Resist the head back into your hands. When you feel it in the back of the neck, you're gonna slowly bring your head forward, all the while resisting the head back. Stop if you feel like you hit a wall or that you cannot resist anymore. That is how you know what your range of motion is. Begin again, chin tuck, look up, rep number two. Resist the head back. Draw the head forward. Good, chin tuck, look up, resist back. Three, two more. Four, last one. Five, good. Whew. We are 
we feel better. Now we're gonna go forward, the front of our neck. So many people have maybe not ever stretched the front of the neck, but our scalenes get very tight. We're shortened a lot when our head is forward. And they get used to being shortened. So what we'll do is the same chin tuck. That just gets our alignment in the proper place. And then you're gonna drop your chin towards your sternum. Take your hands to your forehead. You're gonna look down and press your head forward into your hands. Keep resisting the head forward as you lift your forehead up with your hands. Keep your chin tucked slightly. It's a little bit finicky to figure this one out. Bring it forward without resistance. Resist the forehead forward. Feel it in the front of your neck. Lift the head up. Bring it forward, resist down. You may feel your range of motion starting to change, even after one or two reps. And resist down. Last one. Keep breathing. You're strengthening your arms as you're stretching your neck. Good, and arms come down and rest. I already feel better. I hope you do too. All right, to the side. So I'm gonna just explain this. We'll go through probably two reps, but on your own, I would do five. So find your chin tuck. We're gonna drop the right ear to the right shoulder, shortening the right side of the neck. Hand to the temple, resist the head down into the hand until you feel the right side of the neck engage. Keep resisting to the right as the hand brings you up maybe past center if it feels accessible and over bring it back down without resistance press the head down and back up good you can push pause in the video but you would do three more on that side and then switch to the other chin tuck Ooh, left ear left shoulder head presses into the hand Definitely much more symptomatic on the left side of my neck, although I'm probably a little tighter on the right. Chin tuck. When I get headaches, they're in the left side of my neck. So I often stretch the right side of it before I go to bed. Good, that was two. Three more reps to the other side. So now we've gone back and forward, right and left. You can also work your angles a little bit with it as well to get a little bit different stretch, but I would just um, stick with what we did to start. Next is called a can opener. So it's for the chest and for your shoulder blades. So I'm gonna take this off so you can see a little bit better. I'm trying to stay warm here. All right, hands are gonna go in front of you, thumb to your nose, and then extend your arms a little bit here. Find that chin tuck, shoulder blades retract slightly, press your hands in, as if you want to clap as hard as you can. And as you do that, dry your elbows in to tap. Open it back up without resistance, chin tuck, reset. Hold it, pause for a second. Make sure you feel the resistance in your shoulder blades as well as your chest. Bring it back into tap. So do five of those, they're called the can opener. Next, we want to get the shoulder blade area. So our scapula or shoulder blade, oftentimes has a lot of scar tissue that gets kind of set in underneath that bone and sometimes it can limit the mobility of the scapula to do its job and that can cause shoulder issues and pain but it also translates up into the neck and that's why we stretch it here too so from here we want to stretch this area we need to shorten it add resistance and movement so we're going to bring our arm to the side to shorten it opposite arm is going to grab the elbow like this Good, I like to keep this arm up. It gives me a little bit better leverage. Open it back up again. So you shorten that left shoulder or right shoulder as much as you can. Your resistance is back. Like you want your arm to continue going back. Once you feel it in that shoulder blade area, use the strength of the other arm to bring it across. Open it, resist out, draw it across. Whew, good. Three of those, or three more of those on that side. So you're doing five. Switch to the other side, grab the elbow, open it, shorten that shoulder blade as much as you can, resist into it, use the strength of your other arm to pull it across. Open it, resist it, pull it across. Good, 
five on that side. Next, I wanna get those traps. I've been playing around with the best way to do this. So your traps kinda of right up here. Everyone's kinda of grabbing and oh, they feel tight for everyone. So I suggest grabbing a belt or a towel that's rolled up, um, yoga strap. You're gonna place it around your arm like this above your elbow. Okay, so we wanna shorten the area by lifting our arm up, so we're shorting it. Now when you do this, think about the resistance coming from this trap, this tight area in your neck. So you're focusing your brain and your energy to resist from there. So you're gonna resist your arm up towards the ceiling. And you're gonna use the other arm to grab the strap with both hands. So I'm gonna resist my arm up, keep resisting it up and out as my arm will bring it down. This can vary as far as if you're gonna go across the body like this, or down and around, or just out and in. Wherever you feel that you're able to get the resistance from here is where your arm should be. Everyone's angle is gonna be a little bit different. So I'm right about here, I feel it now kick in. So I'm just gonna move it in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's my calf. I'll do one more here on this side, because it feels good. And I would do five of these. Good. You might feel tense as you're doing it, but then you should feel release after it. Switching to the other side, right above the elbow, both straps in one hand. Play around, find your spot. I found it. Resist from that trap. And use the strength of the arm to go. Back up, shorten, resist, and down. You need to do that. And I would do five of those. So give this a try. See if you stick to it for your period of time that you notice some changes. So, and if you do, please let me know. Just shoot me a message. I'd love to hear people that are experiencing some benefit from this work. So have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.